Okay, welcome. We're going to get started today. My name is Leah Jelke, and I'm the EL teacher at Fargo South High School. And today we have a presentation called Journey to America Narrative Short Stor Stories. And this is actually the fourth volume of our book, but our third time we have been doing this NDSU presentation. So welcome. Today we have Davies High School also joining us. They have joined us last year as well with this project and hopefully in the future as well. And we have 36 students from Fargo South and about 15 students from Davies that took part in this project. And this project started about four years ago and I was reading some of the students' stories for a class project and I thought they were just so amazing that they had to be shared with even more people and it just went from there. So, to start our project, our students listen to immigrant and refugee stories uh, from around the community. So we bring in speakers to the classroom and they get an idea of how people tell their stories. And this year at South, we actually partnered with a senior English class and did a modified narrative for approach with a story exchange. So that got them thinking more about their stories. And then I have been lucky to be able to partner with Kevin Brooks for the last four years, and he helps um, by sending some of his students into our classroom while we're doing the technical writing part. And also, just new this year, um, Jacqueline Busi and Lisa Toomey from Concordia are using our other book, which is kind of like a jump off from this one, is called Green Card Voices, stories from a Fargo High School that we published last year. That was a whole another project. And they're using that as a curriculum with uh, about 30 of our Fargo South students featured in that professional book and it sold all over the nation actually as a curriculum. So she also, um, those two teachers also had their students come in and volunteer with my students. So it was a wonderful collaborative project and it took about 10 weeks. And our students on Martin Luther King Day had their very first reading of their stories. About six of them went to Concordia and they made a session just for our students. So we've been doing this reading since the January 15th. And yesterday, Fargo South students presented, half of them presented at Fargo South to the staff and the students. And today you'll see in your brochures, if you have one, if you don't, there's some right over there, that we have 20 students listed and uh, there's a mix of Davies and Fargo South students today that you will hear. So I'm going to show you um, really quickly in our website um, the place that you can find the ebook. Right now we have just published this anthology. We have a limited edition over there you can grab for free on your way out if you would like. Um, if you did not get a chance to get one today or they run out, you can go online and or tell your friends about going online. I also have a business card over there and on the brochures they have the website. So if you just take this with you, you can find it. And so this is our Fargo South website for our English 4 class. And we have some happenings up there. But um, uh, depending on your computer, you'll see tabs at the top or like this. You'll hit 2017 Stories homepage. And there's from our Concordia reading earlier this month. And it talks about our project, talks about the different stages that I just briefly went through. It has this video we put together about the Narrative 4 experience at South, which was a, a new and amazing thing we did with these students. Uh, pictures of that experience and just the steps in the process to this project. And if you go back to the top, there is a little tab here. This is a little different than mine. And you can go to 2007, you can go to the South High Stories and the Davies Story. So we'll just show an example. Each story is linked. And you can open it up, make it bigger. Some of them open small, but you can make it bigger full screen and you can click through and you can read it. Each student has an About the Author page that I'm going to read to introduce them today. And then also they have a language glossary. So in their, um, they had to add dialogue to this project to learn about dialogue. They had to also put in three or more sentences of their native language just to kind of put it in there and then to show everybody else what their native language is like and they have a glossary for you if you don't know that language. I know a student mentioned um, just like when they learned English and they didn't know it, so now 
our, our friends who speak native English, they have to look something up too. So there it is. So we have been enjoying our eBooks and they're accessible. Obviously any, any computer you can go on, you can access these. And again, the website is on the blue papers and then also there's some business cards over there as well on the table. So I don't wanna ramble on and on today. I wanna really get to why we're here, our students. And I wanna to mention too, our students are all a mix of ninth through 12th graders. Um, so it's just a base, this class is the last class before they go into a mainstream English class or some are seniors, so some will be graduating as well. So I'm going to introduce them and read them and they're gonna come up and read a three to four minute excerpt from their story. Okay, so let's begin. Noella Akech is 14 years old and a freshman at Fargo South High School. She was born in Uganda on January 10th, 2003. She came to the U.S. from the Mir Iri refugee camp in Uganda on December 5th, 2013. She came with her mom and five sisters. She speaks three languages, Madai, Arabic, and English. She plays basketball and track and field at Fargo South High School. Her favorite subjects are English and math. She wants to go into the military when she finishes college. Noella. The worst day of my life. I heard loud gunshots, screaming, and people crying outside. I was inside sleeping at that time, so I woke up and started looking for my mom and my three other siblings. I found them outside where the people were screaming and crying. I was so scared, so my mom took my hand and my older sister's hand and took us to her friend's house. Baba Ningo, I asked her. He went to fight for our country, she said. My dad was in the army of South Sudan. I was sad because the Civil War had been going on for many long years. So my mom decided that we should go to a safe place where the war couldn't reach us. We left the next night because if we lived in the morning, we would be caught and killed by the government army. My family walked for hours to get to Ajumani. We had to sleep under a leafy bush so the army wouldn't find us and kill us. In the morning, we kept on going and walked for another hour. From there, we reached Ajumani where the war, there was no war and it was safe for us to stay there. We stayed in Ajumani for three years. One day, my dad's brother called my mom and told her that there was a refugee camp in Uganda. My mom came and told us that we were going somewhere. Where are we going, I asked. You will find out, she said. I started packing my suitcase. The next day, we left Ajumani. We drove for hours before reaching Uganda, and then we arrived at Mire refugee camp. The camp had many people in it that had run away from their homes, and also many kids that had lost their parents. We found some of my dad's brothers there. Amolonyidi Baruria, my mom asked my uncle. Of course you can stay at my house, said my uncle. We stayed at Mire refugee camp for two years and then one day, people came and interviewed my mom. They asked her questions about my dad and other things. Then one of my dad's friend, who's in the army, called my mom and said that my dad got in an accident. He got caught in the middle of a bomb explosion. I was playing with my friends at that time of the call and I didn't know what was going on. Later, he was brought home. I saw my mom sitting on a bench, crying. Why are you crying, I asked her. Mawaku, she said, as she shook her head. I walked towards her and I comforted her so that she wouldn't cry. My dad was with us for two more weeks, then he passed away. Everyone was crying, including me. It was the worst day of my life to be continued. (laughs) 
Ruth McCullum was born in Chad. She moved to America on March 7, 2013. She's a senior at Davies High School. She is 17 years old and has 10 family members who moved with her to Fargo. She loves to play soccer with her friends. She is planning to go to college for two years and then work at a hospital. Ruth knows and uses four languages, American Sign Language, English, French, and French Sign Language. Ruth. Hello, everyone. Noise to silent. When I was five, I became sick for a very long time. And I lost my hearing. My mom brought me to the hospital, and the doctor told her that my hearing was le or gone. And my family was shocked. And then my mom started to teach me French. I tried to learn from them and other people who also spoke French. My family decided to move. And then the next day we moved to Cameroon. When we arrived there to Cameroon, I finally had met my grandparents. They thought I was hearing, but I couldn't hear what they said. So then my mom brought me to the hospital and the doctor checked my hearing. The audiologist showed my mom that my hearing was dropping and that I couldn't hear. So the doctor told me, and later I went to a deaf school for two years. I would wake up early and I would walk to the bus. When I would get on the bus, it would arrive. I'd get off the bus in the city that school was in. And then I would walk to school. I was late for class. And I was also arriving home late. I earned good grades in school. And I tried my best to do what I could. My teacher, my principals, and everyone in the school signed and my mom would ask me to go shopping but I couldn't speak. I was stressed and frustrated with people for a long time. My parents, my siblings moved a few days later. Oh, I would go and get water to drink. And when I was walking there, I walked in front of a car. My family would call for me but I couldn't hear them and I couldn't hear the car coming, so it almost hit me, and I was scared. After we moved to America, <coughs> on March 7, 2013, my mom brought me to an audiologist to get a hearing aid. And later we went to Minneapolis for surgery, for a cochlear implant. Oh, I didn't understand what it was for, what the surgery was for but I remember waking up dizzy, confused, and using a wheelchair to leave the hospital. Goodbye. To be continued. <laughs> Poonam Gali. Poonam was born on January 6, 2002 in Nepal. She came to the U.S. on August 3, 2011. She is a sophomore at Fargo South High School. She speaks three languages, Nepali, English, and a little bit of Hindi. Her favorite sport is soccer, and she plays soccer for Fargo South. She likes to dance. Her favorite class is math, and in the future, she wants to become a lawyer. Poonam. memory will remain for eternity. My family is originally from Bhutan, but they had to move to a Nepali refugee camp because of the Bhutanese government. My family moved to Nepal on July 23, 1992. They faced many challenges such as water problems, 
no education and no jobs. After a few years, the camp made two small schools and a water pump station. They eventually found jobs such as farming, building houses, building temples, and carrying heavy things. Many people had to leave their families to find work. One of them was my dad. He needed to take a job far away from us to make money so the rest of my family could eat. We only saw him once or twice a year. One night, I was doing my homework. Then when I heard people yelling, fire, 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 people were screaming and running. There was a huge fire in the camp. I was very scared, but I, but I was just standing there looking at the fire. I was not moving. It was like I was paralyzed. Suddenly, my mom came and took me away from there. People tried to put water on the fire, but the water but the fire was too big to be put out, so everybody ran to the large forest that was near the camp. Our houses burned down, and, and many people died in the fire. After the horrible day, we had nowhere to go, so we lived in the forest. At night, it looked very scary and dangerous. A few months later, the government gave each family the materials to build houses. My parents and I built our house near the school, and my dad went to work at a place called Birtamot, and he, he helped build houses. One day, I was waking up from my sleep early in the morning. There was a huge crowd that woke me up, so my mom went outside to see what was going on. I thought people were fighting, so I, was, I went outside as well. Nobody was fighting, but there was a Use bigger fire than the one before. After the fire, we built a small tent and lived there for months. The government didn't have enough money to buy materials to make new houses for each family, so they decided to move us into a different camp. There were seven refugee camps in Nepal. Golda, Patri, Timai, Kudnabari, Balagi 1, Balagi 2, and Balagi 3. When I was eight years old, my parents had started both work, which meant I had to cook food for them. I managed my school and the chores at home, such as cleaning the house, planting flowers in the garden, and cooking. One day, some American people came to the camp and showed us some videos that they had recorded in the United States. Those people told us that there were lots of opportunities for people like us, and we could build a brighter future in the United States. Many people decided to move to America to be continued. Kokob Gabri Johannes, well, let me get her up here. Oh, Fred is not feeling well today, so he's on the program, but he is not here, so we're going to go to Kokob. There we go. Kokob Gabriel Johannes is 20 years old and a senior at Fargo South High School. She came to the U.S. from a refugee camp in Ethiopia on September 19, 2014. She speaks two languages, Tigrinya and English. She likes to play soccer and volleyball. She works at a Chinese restaurant called Lian Chin. Her favorite subjects are math and science and she wants to become a nurse in the future. Kokab. Pray for the best. Be silent and be quiet, Kokob. My mom told me. OK, mom, I said. I had just walked home from my friend's house. I sat in silence for a few minutes. Finally, my mom told me the soldiers were looking for me. Since I, was, since I was in eighth grade, I took a test. If I failed the test, the government was going on to take me and put me in the military. Even I thought I was a girl, I was just 14 years old. So at that time, I only had one choice, to leave my family. A week later, I started planning to go to Ethiopia refugee camp. I didn't tell anybody. I made the plan by myself. 
When I arrived at the refugee camp, they took me to the, the main office. They asked me so many questions. Where did you come to Ethiopia? What happened in your country? Where is your family? I was 14 years old. I cried because I was scared. Don't cry. We are not going to kill you or do a bad thing to you. We are just asking a question, they told me. Many, many kids ran away to the camp because the government of Eritrea was forcing a kid to be a child, soldier, or trying to kill them. They took me to the main office and they gave me a small bedroom, food, and water, which is I sure was other six girls. The whole first night, I couldn't close my eyes. I cried. One girl came to me, said, what happened? Are you OK? No, I replied. Become a, she asked. Because I miss my family, I cried. I wake up in the morning and I ate breakfast with six girls. I didn't have enough food to eat as the refugee came. I was thinking of going on Sudan because I heard of, I heard other in the camp, the refugee camp over there they had more resource. I called the man who knows how to travel Sudan. He quickly picked up the phone. He said, many key. Hi, this is Coco. I want to talk to you about Sudan, I said. Do you want to go to Sudan, he asked. Yes, I said. If you want to go to Sudan, you have to pay money, he said. How much, I asked. 500, he replied. OK, I said. I didn't have the money, but I felt like I didn't have a choice. We are going on in the morning at 5 AM, he said. He came the morning with other people also trying to go to Sudan. We traveled from the Ethiopia refugee camp to Humara, which is near Sudan. We were in all day in Humara. The men who took us there ended up leaving. We tired to call him, but he didn't pick up the phone. Everybody was wondering there where is he was. We don't have enough food, water, or extra clothes. Everybody was hungry. It was so hot because we were in the desert. Everybody wanted to go back to the refugee camp because we didn't know where Sudan was. After 45 minutes, we heard loud boom, boom, to be continued. Abshir Omar. Abshir was born in a Kenyan refugee camp in 1999. He came to the U.S. on December 22, 2014 with his dad. He has been playing soccer since he was six years old and now plays on three different teams. Abshir speaks four languages, Somali, Swahili, English, and Arabic. He is a senior at Davies High School. Abshir. Life changed. In 2005, we started the process of going to America with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. But then my aunt got sick in 2007. She left us with my dad. So my cousin and I lived with him while my dad's sister was gone for like two years. The International Organization for Migration told my dad that we were about to go to America. America, I also honor, exclaimed my dad right after I woke up from a nap. I was like, really? He replied, yeah. I couldn't believe that we would be going to the U.S. As soon as we got everything ready, the IM canceled our trip. It was the saddest thing ever in our life. All during this time, we had been living in a refugee camp in Kenya. Life could be very dangerous in the camp. For example, in 2012, there was a night when my dad and his friends were trying to come home. A thief caught one of my dad's friends, and my dad started running away. At that moment, a thief shot my dad, but he missed. My dad called us and told us that the gun we heard was this thief shooting at him. Another memory I have is when I was at my friend's house one night. His mom went outside and never came back. We all were worried about her all night. The next morning we found her body outside of the house and she was dead. The people who killed her put her body in a hole in the ground near the house. In 2014, there was war between Somali, Sudan, Congo and Turkana. My dad told me, don't go anywhere because the war is really bad. And if they see you outside, they will kill you and burn you there. I replied, okay. So I didn't go anywhere for like two weeks. 
When the war ended, I found out that one of my friends had died. They showed me a picture of him, and the way that they killed him was really bad. So I started going to school again. All these Sudanese people started fighting with us again at the school. When they saw, uh, when they saw any of us outside of school, they would try to kill us. So all we could do was escape the rest of the classes, go home, and try to come back to school again in the morning. We did that for a few days until there was a peace to be continued. Tumba Therese Lusamba was born in 1998 in Lumbashi, and she came to the United States with her grandmother, cousin, sister, and her two uncles on our April 27, 2016. She is a junior at Fargo South High School, and she speaks six languages, Swahili, Portuguese, Lingala, Nyanja, Chaluba, and English. Her favorite subjects are English and history. She plays basketball. When she graduates, she wants to join the Army. Natumba. The final destination. I suddenly heard gunshots. Mushitoke Mufunge Milango, my neighbor shouted. People are crying, screaming, and running. Close the windows, do it quick, my grandfather said loudly. It started as a beautiful day. My family was having a wonderful chat. We talked and laughed, and there was hot water on the stove because my aunt was cooking. Suddenly, we all heard loud sounds coming from outside. It continued to get very loud. We heard people shouting for help and kids crying. As my uncle stood up and looked through the window, he saw exactly what was happening and told us that people were being killed out there. It was not safe for us. After a while, I heard my grandfather say quietly, let's find our way out. Suddenly, we heard loud sounds coming from, from the door. It was the Katangese people who came after our tribe, the Kasayans, because there was a conflict. The Katangese people did not want us, the Kasayans, in Lubumbashi. So they started killing and chasing us out of Lubumbashi. I lived with my grandparents because my father had died when I was young and my mother had went to work in a different city. During the attack, my grandmother was not with us because she went on a business trip. She was a businesswoman who normally went to different places to buy things, mostly food to sell in Lubumbashi. When the enemies reached our doorsteps, they pushed the door and came inside the house. They took the hot water that was on the stove and poured it on my uncle and my grandfather burning them badly. My family did not have a choice. After they left, we escaped and fled our country. We started walking all night. We soon had to stop because my uncle could not continue. He died because of his burns all over his body. My grandfather had to dig a hole and bury him. Soon after walking some more, my grandfather, who was also badly burned and not feeling well, had to, had to talk with my aunt. <laughs> to be continued. Sacralyn Grace Kui is a senior at Fargo South High School. She came to the U.S. on the 5th of March, 2015. She came with her family. She is from Liberia, and she speaks Liberian, Pidgin English, and English. She wants to become a doctor in the future. Sacralyn.
my loved family changed. I have a history of finding myself in a weird and dangerous situation. I had a very unlucky early childhood. One day, when I was four years old, my mom bathed me and took me to her room. She put me on the bed and left me with her sister while she went outside to get something for me. When she got back into the room, she saw me sitting right where she left me, but was bleeding from my head. My mom thought I had put a medicine on me, so she didn't bother to check it out. She started to clean it up. The blood kept pouring down on me. When she looked to see what was pouring out of my head, she saw my head bleeding, but the blood wouldn't stop. She rushed me to the clinic, and the doctor gave me seven stitches on my head. When they got back home, she went to talk to her sister. How did my baby start bleeding from her head? She asked. I don't know, her sister replied. I wasn't paying attention. No one ever did find out how my hair started to bleed. A few months after, it was nighttime, and my parents left me in the room with a candle 